Welcome to Air Gun Action. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a close look at the new BSA Scorpion TS. But before that, I'm going to be putting the Daystate Alpha Wolf Safari Edition through its paces during my woodland pest control rounds. Right, I'm pretty excited about today's outing because I've managed to get my hands on the new Safari version of the Daystate Alpha Wolf. Now this air gun is absolutely packed with features including touchscreen tunability and an onboard chronograph. Um, this one's a 2-2. I'm using 18 grain uh, Rangemaster Sovereign pellets, running them at about 900 feet per second. It's doing that very consistently. I guess that's probably just shy of 35 foot pounds, so it's got plenty of wallop. Now, I've paired it with an MTC King Cobra scope, and they're shooting absolutely sweet. Now, as I said, this gun is loaded with features, but this isn't a review. If you do want to find out more about it, I've written a detailed review for Air Gunner magazine, so you can read all about it in there. So I'm going to be on the grey squirrels today and I'm going to start uh, targeting them at a pheasant feeder where we actually shot a few weeks ago. Now the squirrels are still hitting it hard and not just the grain but they've also presumably become frustrated by the slow flow of feed and they've actually chewed right through the top of the feeder and through the lid which has irritated the gamekeeper even more. Um, not least because he didn't actually have another lid that was the right size, so there's now a larger one on there that's pinned in place with a concrete slab. Um, now, aside from that feeder, I've also got a feeding station of my own set up in these woods, and if we have time, we may also check in on that. So, I'm gonna get myself settled in, and hopefully we'll see a few squirrels. Well, I have to admit, I didn't even see that one turn up. I just looked across the feeder and it was there. Uh, the important thing was that it was feeding very confidently and the Alpha Wolf Safari did the absolute business on it. Let's hope it was the one that chewed up the feeder. Well, we've had that one squirrel, but it's actually turned out to be a lot quieter here than I'd expected. So I think the best thing I can do now is head over to my peanut feeder and see what's going on over there. Right, well, this is looking a bit more encouraging. Um, as you can see, I haven't even had a chance to build a hide here yet, but as we approach the feeder, we actually spooked a couple of squirrels off of it. So they're obviously well onto the peanuts. And so what I've done is I've tucked myself in about 30 metres away in the hope that they'll return. I've put the head net on just to give myself a bit more concealment. And also, it's got to be said, it's another advantage of this safari version of the Alpha Wolf is the fact that it's got this dark, rough cut wooden stock. Now, obviously I don't know what grey squirrels can really see, but I'd rather be sat here trying to be discreet with this finish of stock rather than the bright red laminate. Anyway, I'm gonna keep quiet now, 
hopefully one or two of those squirrels will venture back. Well that has certainly convinced me that we've done the right thing settling in here. Now as you'll see, that squirrel did dangle for a bit. I've mentioned this loads of times before, but when you head shoot squirrels, it does, you know, it can make them have a nervous reaction. It makes them clench up and they will hang like that for a while. But if you think about it, when they're shot through the skull, they are stone dead. It's still a clean kill. Wow, that one raised its head literally just as I was about to pull the trigger. Frank, uh, thankfully I hadn't and I was just able to just shift my aim slightly, line back up between its eye and ear and wallop it in the head. Now I was waiting for quite a while to see if it was going to turn back and settle on the feeder but eventually it became pretty obvious that I, th I think it was actually quite spooked by the sight of the dead squirrels on the ground. So I just went ahead, took it from the tree trunk. Wow, I actually thought that, that one was going to linger on the trunk like the previous one, but it actually went right down amongst the shot squirrels, settled there and actually looked like it was lapping up blood from the ivy leaves. Anyway, the important thing is that's one less here. Well, it's a good job I had the scope cam on for that one because that one clambered just a little little way up the tree but obviously out of the view of the fixed camera that we've got trained on the feeder though it may have just been in frame anyhow I'm gonna make that the last one 
firstly because it was quite a, a long wait for that one but also because I wasn't actually planning on doing a lot more today other than spend a couple of hours down by the pheasant feeder and then maybe just quickly check in on this one but I'm really glad that we did because it's completely changed our fortunes and also what a great first proper outing for the Alpha Wolf Safari. Now it had already given a brilliant account of itself on the range and now it's done a fantastic job in the field. Proper outing for the Alpha Wolf Safari. Now it had already given a brilliant account of itself on the range. A fantastic job. The safari edition of the Daystate Alpha Wolf giving a great account of itself in the field there. Next up, it's the BSA Scorpion TS. We've had a run of sensibly priced PCPs up for review over the past few months, and I've got a really special one here. Now, not only does it cost well under £600, it also boasts Birmingham-made BSA pedigree. This is the new and rock solid BSA Scorpion TS and it retails for just £569. As you can see this air gun sits in a black synthetic stock. It's super tough and can certainly stand up to a few knocks. Now it also comes pre-fitted with QR studs at the front and rear of the stock. And overall, it's just really nicely styled with fairly smooth flowing lines. Now, I particularly like the forward sweep of the relatively long forend. There are raised panels along both sides of the forend, but the entire surface of the stock is actually slightly stippled, which makes it really grippy. Now, it's an ambidextrous stock, although there is actually a very slight right hand bias to the pistol grip. Now that grip is nice and steep and it's got a really chunky swell to it that really fills the palm and also it enables you to shoot thumb up. I'm always glad to see a nice high cheek piece on scope only air guns and this one is great. It's really pronounced and it set me up very well on the scope. Now obviously this is a recoilless air gun but the rear of the stock is still finished with a nice ventilated pad. In terms of its proportions, the Scorpion TS measures 92 centimeters before you fit a silencer and tips the scales at just over 3.4 kilos before you fit a scope. Now, that sort of length and weight is gonna make this a very manageable air gun for most shooters. Now, I've already said it's rock solid and it is just typical BSA build quality. It's nicely finished, well engineered and feels like it will last for years. Scope mounting is via a dovetail rail which offers 18 centimetres of clamping space. Now best of all it isn't interrupted by the magazine which sits well beneath it and doesn't get in the way. Now another great feature of this air gun is the fact that it boasts BSA's famous cold hammer forged barrel. Now it's free floating, crowned, chambered and choked and has a reputation for being very accurate. It's also threaded for silencer attachment. The Scorpion TS runs a 10 shot magazine and it's a very good one with a polymer drum that's really kind to pellets. Now it also has a shot counter so you can keep an eye on how many pellets you've got left in there. Now to remove it you simply pull the cocking bolt all the way back and pull the magazine out from the left hand side of the gun. Now it's very simple to load. All you do is push a pellet in to the first hole from the rear and then rotate the inner drum to expose the next chamber and push a pellet into there. You then just keep repeating that process until it's full. The magazine retaining pin has gone from this model which uses a magnet instead. So you just slot the mag in and it's held securely in place. 
Now, that slick magazine is driven by a nice, chunky rear bolt action. Now, it's a really positive mechanism and it takes care of cocking, indexing, and loading to keep the shots coming really quickly. Now, I've used bolt action BSAs for years and the mechanism has always worked without a hitch. It's absolutely brilliant. This airgun also has a pretty decent adjustable two-stage trigger. Now the blade is fairly basic in design, but it felt absolutely fine to me. The most important thing is its let off, and that was absolutely spot on with no tinkering. Typical of BSA, the first stage is nice and deep, and it comes to an extremely clear stop before a very crisp and predictable second stage break with absolutely no creep. The manual safety catch is nicely positioned well away from the trigger at the rear of the action. Now it's a rocker type switch and you simply pull it back to make the gun safe and then thumb it forwards when you're ready to take the shot. Equipped with a self-regulating valve, the Scorpion TS is a pretty consistent performer. Now, this one's muzzle velocity was within nine feet per second over a string of 10 shots with 8.64 grain BSA Gold Star pellets. Now, muzzle energy was around 11.3 foot-pounds, which I think is just about perfect for a 12 foot-pound air rifle. Now, maximum fill pressure is 232 bar and air pressure is displayed on the gauge at the front of the cylinder. One of the key changes on the new Scorpion TS is increased air capacity in its long, slender cylinder. Now, it's available in 177, 22, and 0.25 calibers, all of which should return around 140 consistent shots from a full charge. Now, obviously, that's going to be significantly less if you go for a high-powered model. Now, when it is time to refill with air, it's simply a matter of turning the collar at the front of the cylinder to expose the inlet and then plugging in with the supplied charging probe. I've already said that BSA barrels are accurate. Now, combined with consistent power output and a very predictable trigger, this airgun is capable of some really impressive downrange precision. Now, if you pair it with the right pellet, it's capable of not just single holing, but literally landing pellet on pellet at 30 meters, and it's got target toppling accuracy at ranges way beyond that. Now, the Scorpion TS may well be priced towards the plinking end of the PCP market, but it can certainly hold its own on the club range, and it's more than accurate enough for tackling live quarry over sensible ranges. So, that's the new BSA Scorpion TS. Now I always expect good things from BSA and this airgun really doesn't disappoint. It may not feature some of the whistles and bells that you'll find on some of its competitors, but that's because it simply doesn't need them. This is a no fuss PCP with everything you need and nothing you don't. All of your spend is going on quality, not gimmicks. Now it feels incredibly robust, yet it's still refined to shoot and very accurate. I was going to say that it would make a brilliant first PCP, and while it would, it is also an airgun that I think a lot of shooters are gonna to want to stick with simply because it gets the job done. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but we'll be back again in two weeks' time with much, much more. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribing is free, and it means you won't miss a single episode. Also, do take a look at the subscription offers for Airgunner and Airgun World magazines that we've got a link to in the show description. So, I'll see you in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting, and stay safe. <laughs>